And here we are again, folks, back for Crohn's Crucible. It's Super Bowl night, so don't know how many people will be live, but we are live, so welcome to the stream or the video, whichever one you are watching. We are back with Water Dance, our version of Waterdeep Dragon Heist from Wizards of the Coast. And we are into the middle of the intrigue. Does anybody have anything they want to addendum to what happened last week or what happened during the week or anything of that sort before we take off? Well, the Akashian is currently uh, in possession of Erstool's uh, weapons. Yeah, uh, just a reminder of that. He, he, he did get petted that. He, yeah, he has been disarmed. Are we talking about game specific things? Yes. No, not necessarily. Oh. Oh. No. Uh, if you're in Louisiana or any southwestern coastal states, watch out for uh, Cuban tree frogs. Apparently, they are a very invasive species that get in your plumbing and generally cause bad times. I've also heard they mug you when you least expect it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> words on that one. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you're not speaking from personal experience on that one. No, but I just read an article right before we started about <laughs> these Cuban tree frogs. If, if we're just going uh, for random stuff as well, Edge is back after nine years of retirement from triple neck fusion surgery, back in the ring. I feel, like that, would, say I, I, I feel like that would be like a sign, you know. <laughs> the surgery, yeah. Of course, neck surgery and frogs, they're all connected. They are, they are. Well, Brilliant would think that. Well, it's a good thing he's in character. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my viewers, live and otherwise, uh, you can see why we are a bunch of nutcases. We are amazing. Also, I'm enjoying this 75 degree February weather. Isn't it nice? Yeah, I was ready for a little bit of that, so I'm glad for it. Well, it looks like all our sounds are working. I didn't have anything, any updates that ruined all my sounds this week, so looks like we are ready to move on. When we, en when we ended up last week, they had kind of scrammed to a certain extent out of the Grahlhund v, uh, Villa that um, where a, basically a bloodbath had occurred. And they're not entirely sure of which side everyone in the fight was on. There were clearly the nobles, the Grahlhund nobles. There was Yala Grahlhund, who is the lady of the manor. Uh, there was Oren Grahlhund, who got killed during the fight. Apparently there were some children because they were referred to at one point. Somebody heard of reference to the fact that there were children there somewhere. So likely they were somewhat witnesses to what went on. But basically there was this group of Zentarum, what we are loosely calling the Fist Zentarum, ones with a, an additional symbol tattooed on them. And only about two-thirds of the thugs that were in this war with the um, guards seemed to have the extra fist tattooed on their, their neck or their forearm. A couple of them had only the regular flying serpent. Now, those two were among the dead. The only one of any kind of Zentarum faction that survived the battle uh, and actually didn't, he was revived afterwards, was Erstel Floxen. Erstel Floxen was actually known to Relian and Epiphany. They had met him once when they were elsewhere meeting up with some people. They had run into him. He was in an office talking to someone and he left shortly after they arrived. He apparently was related to some of the activities that they have, but there wasn't anything super definite that was um, that they knew about him until he shows up again 
at the manor and has this burn on his face, making it highly likely that he was the burnt man that ran from the fireball that occurred outside the Troll Skull Inn. So there's a very hazy connection of what's going on between the Grawlhunds the, and both sides of the Zentarum, whatever this is that is coming up. And in the middle of this, you know that there's a great deal more involved. Most of the players know that the Grawlhunds, they, they had come up with this name. It had come up to them a time or two in their backstories as a, an up-and-coming house. And they were in very heated contention for supremacy for a whenever one of the Lord's council seats opened up that they would possibly get one of these, they were in contention with another house, which is frequently mentioned, well known. Uh, everybody knows House Castellanter as one of the most philanthropic and star-crossed families in Waterdeep. They are vastly wealthy. They have lots of money, and they can bribe and get most anything they want, but they seem to have a very star-crossed past. And rumor has all kinds of things happening to them, no matter who you talk to and inflict with the last person you talked with. So the, the battle finishes at Grawlhund. Lady Grawlhund half blames the party for the death of her husband, basically that they didn't do enough to protect him. She gets very furious, demands that they leave. There's some kind of glaring exchange between her and Erstel Floxen that the party kind of reads as she's threatening him, but they don't know anything below the surface more than that. They, the guards have arrived at the front gate, the groundskeeper is, at the moment, it looks like probably delaying them. He's arguing with them about whether they're getting in. He's probably waiting for one of the Grawlhoons to say, yeah, let them in. But during this time, you are able to sneak around through the back, out through the stable, and get out the back of the estate. You get on your four-man carriage with Jax, the driver, and Maxine, the talking horse, maybe or maybe not, depending on who you talk to. And they go trotting off back to the Troll Skull Inn. Uh, only four people could ride as passengers in the hack. Uh, Cashin, Erstel, who's being kept as a prisoner, uh, Relian and Epiphany are in the hack. The other three um, are um, getting their own transportation or walking. I believe Varys just said since he could move so fast, he just would run it. What are Nokri and Shepard doing? I would probably get hit with the Shepard's uh, allowance, probably get him off the main, anywhere from the main streets and take a back alley to potentially start heading back to Troll Skull or at least get to a different street to get a ride. All right. So I will say that although maybe the Shepherd and Nakri arrive a bit late, maybe 10 or 15 minutes late, they are not too far behind the hack when it arrives because he's not ra uh, racing Maxine, I'm assuming. You wouldn't want to be drawing attention. So she's just doing her usual Tr a soft trot that she does as she's carrying people around. So you arrive at the Troll Skull Inn. You have this very dangerous character in tow. I want you to describe to me exactly how you are going to get him out of the wagon and into the Troll Skull. There are probably four people on the street coming and going with shopping baskets going in and out of the various shops on the, the Troll Skull Alley. They kind of look at the wagon with minimal curiosity, just note that it came up and keep on going about their business. But obviously you've got to dismount and go into the Troll Skull with this rough looking injured guy. So describe yeah. to me exactly yeah. what you're doing. Do you have a carpet, you have a carpet we can use, Andy? <laughs> Tiffany will take off their uh, tarp 
and fling it over Erstal. Yeah, that won't say, that won't draw attention. Please, please bring that back to us. And then Epiphany slinks back into the cart, and lays down. Um. <laughs> uh, um. uh. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, see, does anybody have any potentially have any wax on them? We're not us. Uh, I wanna, why? I want to plug this dude's ears. I actually uh, do have a. I have a question related to that. Would Cashin have? Would, would there be wax in Cashin's uh, lock pick kit? No, I doubt there would. Not the way they describe it. But if anybody has any candles, obviously you would have it. Oh, uh, hmm. We should go in some yeah. I grab oh, some candles. Uh, I think Cashin I, does have candles. So. Yeah. Yeah. So all it would take would be briefly lighting the candle, melting a little bit into something, and then rolling it around in your fingers. It'd be pretty easy. Oh, I got that. That's I'm not in the carriage, but I could. I'm I'm a lighter. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I know. Like I said, oh, oh, see, just my my idea is so he doesn't hear where he is. Earplugs, blindfold, wrap him up, get him inside. Well, before hmm. I'm going to use a spare shirt from uh, a, my spare set of commoner's clothes to blindfold him while they're using uh, the wax from the candles to plug up his ears. I'm actually going to lean over to Nokri while we're doing this, and I'm just going to hiss in her ear, get him inside. Well, you arrive before she does. You arrive before well, she does. I'm, I'm, yes, we're waiting for them, though. Because it wouldn't make much sense for us to try to get this guy in without them. Okay, that's why I wanted you to describe mm -hmm. exactly what you're doing. All right, I would say that between a tarp over his head, blindfolded, um, and being ha manhandled a bit, uh, you are going to draw a bit of attention for... Um, what is happening here? It looks like I will go into the like. So we've pulled up the carriage is pulled up to the front of uh, Troll Skull, but no one's gotten out yet. Yeah. All right. After about a minute of that, uh, I will go up to the carriage, tap on the door quickly, uh, twice to be as a signal to like open the door. Uh, does someone open the door to the carriage? No, there's not really a door, I don't think. Uh, uh, not truly. It's it, it's got an overhead. You, you could look in the back of it. Oh. Okay, uh, so I'll go up to the carriage then and say, what's taking so long? Making sure this one doesn't get away. Now, speaking oh. of such things, one second. It's, don't bother with that. It's, I'll cast Charm Person on Erstal. He has to make a. Uh, I'll try to subtly cast Charm Person on. Yeah, but he'll, he'll still know you did it. After he's already inside. Yeah, but I think there's a reason uh, Nakri is kind of doing all this. That's the reason I OOC that you suggested it, because we don't want him knowing where he is yeah. as he gets out. Well, yes, just. Stay we'll with say, me. Save the Charm Person until we get him well, set up. Sorry. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and cast this. I'm going to, Relian's going to throw his hand outside of the carriage, and I'm going to a loud bang and a sparkle of um, fireworks to appear on the other side of the street. Uh, Passer goes while we just rush this guy into the Troll Skull Tavern. All right, I will say that will give you advantage and a lower roll because you're more likely to do it. I'm going to ask those of you with Erstal, Relian, Epiphany, and Cashin, would the three of you uh, roll? Epiphany is not going with them. Epiphany is laying down because Epiphany has no tarp. Ah, okay. Epiphany is naked. Epiphany <laughs> is naked. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and let me pull you, 
pull this thing to the front or I won't be able to grab it in a moment. Oops, you moved it and now it didn't work. <laughs> well, you are in there. I'll take the wagon off later and, and we'll be able to get to it. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay, let me, there we go. <laughs> there he is laying down even. Yep, laying down in the wagon. All right. Now I'll put the wagon back in the back. What does have to roll? Uh, you need to roll for a performance or deception of oh. whether what whether or not you are disguising the fact that you are trying to basically get a prisoner surreptitiously into the troll skull inn. All right. That's a good roll. That's a good roll. I need Cashin at, uh, to roll one as well. Cashin uh, kind of stumbles, and actually he rolls so badly that the people stare at him and notice that he's kind of uh, stepped in a hole. He's right near where all the blast was, and he stepped in the hole and almost sprained his ankle and is probably hopping around going, ow, 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 uh, which would again draw attention to him and away from Relian, who is very quickly dragging Mr. Floxen into the inn and out of the sight of prying eyes. So between your good roll and the two deception things that are going on here, I will say that you managed to do it. If oh, look, it's Cashin McLean, a vain leaper at it again. <laughs> Basically, uh, Cashin rolled so badly that it actually wound up being in his favor. I totally did that on a purpose. Right. You just came across as such a klutz that everybody was looking at you. All right. So um, Relian has gotten Erstel into the inn. What are the rest of you now doing? Uh, going inside the inn. Move your tokens. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, I will tell Jax to go ahead and, well, Epiphany is still on the tarp. Yeah, I was going yeah. to I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's hired him, too. Would the regular cloak cover Epiphany, or, or does he need his oversized tarp specifically? They, they, they would need probably the tarp. Okay. Would I'll the go robe ahead. work? Like, would the shepherd's robe work? Um, how long is the robe? I mean, it, it drags on the ground. It would probably work to get him inside, at least. Yeah, the shepherd will take it off. He's wearing armor and regular clothes underneath the 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 robe anyway, and he'll just pass it inside. Here you are, Epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just... Lizard leg, goat leg, lizard leg, goat leg. <laughs> they just skitter inside. For, for, for those for those of you who have seen the rescuers down under, I'm just picturing that frilled lizard when he's trying to be sneaky. Pretty much, Gosh. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, I feel old. Uh, I'll go up. That was uh, a great movie. It was. Age is just a number. I'll go up to Jack and, and ha high. hand him a gold coin. Make sure Maxine gets a, a bushel of apples today. She did a fine job. He will uh, touch his fingers to his cap. Why, thank you, sir. And Maxine will turn around and go... By the way, do you happen to know uh, a man named Mert? You mean Mert the money lender, sir? Yes, that's him. Hey, everybody knows Mert. Tell him the, that the shepherd gives his regards. Hey, that I will. I'll stop by his place. Thank you very much. And at that, he uh, gently slaps the reins on Maxine's rump to say, Let's go, girl. And the two of them trot off for other places. Uh, 
then I'll look over to Nagri, shall we? Yes, and then at some point we'll have to have a very long conversation about the day. Indeed, we shall. Stop walking inside. And I'll follow suit. Come to me, little icon. And as you peek out through the windows or between the cracks of the door or whatever, you can see that people didn't seem to spend too much time with uh, watching you get into the inn. They just kind of lightly noticed that there were uh, fireworks. They were a little confused about the fireworks and went over there and didn't know where that came from. But they um, uh, went there and then notice cash and slipping, and that was about all that um, uh, went on with them, and they went about their business, so you will be fine. Cash and fail so well. The second uh, the entire party has made it inside, Rillian's going to yank off the tarp, throw it onto a table near Epi, and he's going to start dragging Erstel towards the hatch to the basement, and he's going to bark out, Leaf! This bad man attempted to hurt the inn. Would you please be a dear? Lock up shop. And if any guards approach, do you come get us. She drifts dreamily over towards the doors and locks up behind you. Thank you, dear. We're going to go in the dark and talk to the man. Rillian. Rillian, before you go down there, I want to have a word. Speak. We will, friend Rillian, we will take him down. Speak with Valkyrie. Or Brutal Smasher, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'll we'll uh, remember that. <laughs> I'll, I'll assist uh, Epiphany with getting Ursel down. And uh, Epiphany brings their hand out, and on one of the hands, there's like two like octopus figures, and they just sort of wrap around the back of Ursel's neck. Come along. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need to know? First off, and she's just going to. Kind of somewhat reach in the hood and try to find a face for a moment before bringing her hand away. And she's like, You are completely unconscious. Are you all right? Oh, I'm dandy, my dear. But uh, I'll be even, even better once I've got some answers. I will and for those of you perceptive enough, um, Rillian's. Carnival Barker esque accent is completely gone, and its place is a far more darker and imperious sounding tone. I I just I said, definitely uh, noticed that. Yeah, I I just typed it in. You do sound a little bit unhinged right now, more so than normal. Zachary's <laughs> just going to put a, a a strong hand on his shoulder for a moment and goes, "I'm not going to question what you're going to ask us about." Do find out everything you can. I made a vow that night that blood will be paid in blood. Oh. I want some answers. See what you can learn about that woman's connection to this to that evening. If anything. Oh, trust me. His, both of his eyes glow mo just monstrous red for a brief moment. I will. And if any of you would like to come and join me, that's perfectly fine, but... Please, I want a little one-on-one -on -one time with the man, and if you have any questions, direct them towards Epi, and he'll direct them towards me, because I'm going to put the fear of Nistra into this man. Oh, yes. Question I... will interject at this point. I, I will have to be there, because I'm not sure if whatever you do will kill the man or leave him brain dead. Kill him? No, 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 you small-minded chap, no. Relian. No kill. Relian, you vow to me that he will not die this night. Oh, that, that's easy enough to give. You want a vow? You have it. 
He's not going to die. I'll hold you to it. Make sure he is still of sound mind. If you've got anything that we can use to turn against that woman, I want to know, and I want them handed to the guards. Sound mind. <laughs> Ep epiphany. Epiphany as looks up. As sound mind as you can lead them. I epiphany. trust you. Sorry. It's okay. Epiphany looks up and then looks back at uh, Ursul. You have approximately 86 seconds before he arrives. I am the same one. <laughs> Erstal, of course, is still blindfolded, so all he hears is this disembodied voice. Oh, Epiphany plucks, plucks the wax out. You have approximately 86 seconds before the other one arrives, and when that one does, you will speak, or you may speak to me quickly. Yeah, Cashin is going to have to go in there because someone has to play good cop. No, let's Epiphany Epiphany is the good cop. No, 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 it is the good cop. No, 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 no. Epi's creepy cop. Rail's creepy cop. <laughs> Erstol will anyway, going down. grit his teeth um, like he kind of expects the worst to happen, and he says, you couldn't do anything to me. Like he could. While while him not to drink, I will have brought down two chairs. Cashin will actually want to uh, speak to speak to Epi for a moment. What was that verse? Uh, while the exchange between Nakri, Relian, and Cashin is going on. Ferris would have, uh, after about 30 seconds of this conversation and realizing what is going to happen, uh, will go downstairs after Epiphany. Um, um, well, perhaps everything might not, hmm, I don't know if I'm okay with everything that is necessarily going to happen today. Varus? Closed yes. mind. Yes? Clo closed mind. Speaking. Closed mind. Hold, just give me a second. No, I come will. Here, please. No, just, just give me a second, please. I will take off his blindfolds and then cast Charm Person and say, I honestly don't want anything bad to happen to you. I try to look out for people. If you. No information that you have is worth what these people seem that they're going to do to you, it really would be better for you to just... <sighs> Give me the, uh, the uh, descript, post the script, and your DC if there's a roll against it. Yeah, DC is 13. It is a, a wisdom save. Save, 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 save. He fails it. <laughs> I, he, he regards me as a friendly acquaintance, so basically a friend who's actually looking out for him. And any uh, charisma checks I make on him are made with advantage. He turns and he looks at you with like a face of despair. He says, you don't understand. Anything you do is like laughter compared to what he would do to me. He's not here right now. These people are. And you, if nothing else, you could run. Worst case scenario, you could run. Best case scenario, you could get to go back to your regular life. <laughs> You I may want my best asleep. interests, but I, I no, I I am too too smart to know. I'm not getting out of this alive. Hell, I didn't even yeah. get out of it alive out of the manor. As they're talking, I I turn to Epiphany. It's adorable. He thinks that this man will leave here. Are you in the uh, in the cellar, Shepherd? I would be in the back with uh, Epiphany. 
Okay, Epiphany yes. is in the cellar. Uh, oh, right. I forgot yeah. the cellar has its own thing. Who is he, Burned Face? He just glares at you. He isn't required to be friendly to you, and he just glares at you. I turn to Epiphany, and oh, I assume at this, uh, it looks like at this point, Cashin and Relian start coming downstairs. No, Cashin. No, Cashin was already down here. Oh, he was, just, he was falling behind. Yeah. Okay, does, does at this point does Relian start coming down the stairs? Relian's been at the bottom of the stairs for about a minute or so, just watching this, hands behind his back, seemingly a little bit entertained, and says, "Oh no, please don't mind me, Junior. Please do continue this farce." Closed mind, perhaps it would be wise if you no longer witness these events. I will go over to where I was brewing and pick up uh, one of the bottles I brought over from my parents' house and just set it next to, like, open it and set it next to Ursul and say, eh, good luck, and I just leave. I leave the cellar, I leave the tavern, I just go for a walk. Oh, we, gotta get the door, we gotta get the door unlocked. <laughs> we have to lock it. We should oh. not let we should we we should not let closed mind leave. I'm actually waiting at the top of the stairs. You should have let him have his chance. Ursel kind of watches Varus leave with a kind of a sad expression, like that's that's the last chance he has in the whole world. And he kind of sighs and turns and looks back to the rest of you with a very locked jaw. Do you uh, wish I to have a drink? He is our guest. We should let him have a drink if he wishes it. The wine is fresh and not made from us. Before that, Cashin is going to once again request Epi to come over and talk to him privately. Friend Relian, do not approach yet, please. We need to time this properly. Yes, Fane Leaper. All right, so the two of you are going at this a little, a little, uh, well, let's just say your bowstring isn't drawn tightly. We are attempting to garner favor by offering him refreshment. I doubt that'll work. This is a Zentaran man. He, and as you can see, he's tight-lipped. True. We have never encountered the Zentaran. All right, inside on that. <laughs> you, what? For what? You, you, <laughs> Roll deception, Appy. Anyway, anyway, Cash will just brush brushes that comment off and just he's just gonna say, no, "Well." You believe it. What, whatever. Cashin just presses on. Look, you, you, you saw how Relian is. He's, he's a little, he's a little angry right now. And I know that you're not going to be, and I know behind that, uh, that face of yours, you're, you're quite angry too, but you're restraining it. We do not experience anger in the way that you do. Hmm. Either way, I do have an idea. Let me talk while after you get your drink, after you give him his drink, let me talk with him and just probe his mind while I while I try to ask him questions. Well, see, we're going see if to he do that as well. Good. Good to see we're on the same page. Perhaps the drink would be better offered by you. All right. We understand that our visage is disturbing to many. Well, Cashin will grab a uh, a tankard and and just uh, pour the wine into it. Then he'll return to Earthstool and offer it up and basically press it to his lips. I'm sorry that the two of them are. I'm sorry that the, the two of them are or. All of us have been rough on you, but you can understand that we're, that this is not personal. Well, for some it is, but 
let's just say you were the wrong man at the wrong place at the wrong time. In a manner of speaking, I was. So you were the so you were the man that attacked Valakar. I did not intend to attack him. It could have gone down much easier, you know, if he'd just let me have it. Well, you know how you know how such line of work is. Two opposing forces, eventually they're going to clash. Yeah. He was not an opposing force. He was just a messenger, a very unfortunate messenger. There's not much left of him. Not much left of that pretty face as well. <laughs> that won't get to me. I don't care about that. Is that wine poison? Uh, cash in will just for... Uh... For convenience sake, uh, take a sip of it and swallow it. There, better. You suffer 10 d 10 points in damage. <laughs> <laughs> How does this taste like chicken tendy? <laughs> Sorry. This smells a lot chicken like tendies and, chicken tendies and chalky milk. Oh. And uh, Erstel says, Pity. I would have much preferred to drink it if it was poisoned. Hmm. Either way. I really just... would rather keep a clear mind. Hmm. Well, let's... So, you were the man that attacked Dalakar. I will say that, yes. I was the man who attacked Dalakar. I was the man who was there when that stupid construct... Manage to ruin everything. And I, and I can only surmise that the construct was sent by Lady Grauhund. She is the worst kind of traitor. She is traitor to everyone. Yes, I know about her. I know about her family's history. They like to climb their ladders, even if they have to step over bodies. I will tell you this. <laughs> you saw her tears and her upset over Aurum's death. <laughs> when you left, I can guarantee she was laughing riotously. You gave her a favor by not resurrecting her husband. She is overjoyed. No love lost. You so. removed a major threat from her, and now she has free reign. And lords know what she did with that. I. She sent it off somewhere. I know she has. And where did she get it? The construct? <laughs> a little bribing, a little luck, and she wound up finding it. Uh, I believe she probably had a bit of assistance from one of those she will backstab, but I cannot tell you entirely how she came by it, except that it had to do with it being in the right place at the right time when she ran across it and she saw that it was useful to her. Hmm. And how, and how did she get those lovely fire beads that caused that mess outside? That I oh, cannot that tell you. That, that I cannot tell you. And I don't even know if she gave it to that construct or whether she intended to blow us up. If she intended to blow us up, she could have wound up with absolutely nothing, the fool. Hmm. So, a few more questions. Who do you think she betrayed you for? 
he seems to be thinking for a while. You know that is a hard question to answer. <sighs> she could have betrayed me for the showman. She could have betrayed me because she thinks she can fool the fist. She could have betrayed me because some lord paid her some money. I don't know why she betrayed me, but I can guarantee one thing. She betrayed me because she thinks Yala Grahund will gain out of it. One more, one final Fred. question. Who's the fist? Pain Leaper, a moment. Very well. And you'll look and you'll walk back to Epi. I would recommend that friend Relian handles questions regarding the fist. Alright, but I'll but I will be here to observe. Friend Relian. I'll whisper into Epiphany's ear, by the way. Uh, do you I know you are able to connect minds. Have you been able to do so with the gentleman? Sorry, we weren't paying attention. Brilliant's just taking the whole scene in. Friend Brilliant, we believe that you had many questions for this one. Perhaps it would be correct time. And then Epiphany will cast an extended uh, detect thoughts. Spending his last sorcery. And it affects only Erstal? So basically what it is is as part of the casting and then as an action, uh, Epiphany can hone in on somebody and get their surface thoughts um, without them knowing. But if uh, Epiphany tries to probe deeper, they get a wisdom save and they're aware that I'm trying to do it. Okay, so you're you're focusing on him, not anything yeah, spreading uh, out. I'm okay. not probing at all. I'm just trying to get like the surface thoughts just to kind of see like as really questions and like where's his thoughts going the first thing is you connect you just uh, get a an overwhelming sense of complete betrayal and and fury he is just furious and apparently not so much at you friend Rillian is going to slowly approach Erstal and, uh... This woman is mad. Is... Is Erstal, like, on his knees, or is he sitting down? What, what's his current position? I Stay did say that I brought down two chairs, one for Erstal to sit on and one for the questioner to sit on. The Inquisitor. Rillian's going to sit down. He's going to look at Erstal for a few moments. He's going to reach in both of his hands, and he says, Do you know who I am. Do you remember me? He looks at you for a few moments. You're one of the new ones. I saw you once in the office. Yes. I've got a few questions for you. Why did you leave? Why did you follow as he's calling himself now? What made you Turn traitor, Erstal. How long have you been in water deep? Oh, going on two years now. Two years and you still do not understand? Uh, his grip will actually tighten and says, That's enough questions out of you. I'm the one asking questions. Why? Because power is money in this city. Power is control. Power is wealth. Ask any one of the lords on the council, and I will tell you, every one of them have used wealth and power to get there. You do not rise so without it. So that's your reasoning. Wealth. Power, influence. How incredibly boring. So, who is the fist now? Who's leading this new little splinter branch? 
much that you've turned traitor for. A name? I don't know what he is calling himself, but they say, those who have met him face to face, that you don't meet him to his face without coming away trembling in your knees. He is power incarnate. He is everything that will control this petty little world that they call Waterdeep. He is the ultimate power. The funny thing is, is you actually believe that. You Does he? Do I get the feeling that he's trying to speak truth? You get the feeling that he doesn't believe he's the ultimate power, but that he believes that he has put his money with the power most likely to win in Waterdeep. Okay, and Epiphany will, to, will bonus point establish, establish connection to uh, Relian to just kind of pass along that he's, he's spewing the talking points of his side. The funny thing is you actually believe that to a certain extent. You're just like all the others. All the others who scurry around and try to curry favor and power and not see in the cycles that continue to ebb and flow, continuing as it will always continue. You're not new, you're not original, and not, neither is this fist. He may rise, but he'll fall, and you'll have wasted your damn time. Now, for the questions, what exactly does the fist want? What do you all want? He wants to return to the time when Waterdeep was in the control of a truly strong man. And those that stand at his side will be the ones who control the power. No, do not ask me before you do. <laughs> I am not so foolish as to think I am going to leave here alive. But for those who gamble, if you do not risk everything, you do not stand the chance of winning everything. I have rolled my dice. I have lost, but only due to a traitor who betrays the fist, who betrays the showman, who betrays Waterdeep. She betrays everyone. I had no idea the depth of her depravity. Um, Rillian is going to stiff and say, Ursa, don't make decisions for me. I am not going to kill you. I made a vow that one way or another, you are going to leave here alive, so you're already wrong about that. And he suddenly withdraws his dagger and he put, places it against Ursula's <laughs> cheek. However, it's up to you if you leave here whole or in a few more pieces than you already are. Now, who's this traitor that you seem to love blabbing about? Yala Ground. And what exactly did she betray? Deal you had with her? The stone was to go to the fist. Yes, let's talk about that. The stone. Where is it? You know, I would suggest you ask the traitor about that. It was supposed to be in my hand. It was supposed to be in the fist's hand by now. And she took it and betrayed it. When I arrived with it, she threw me in a cell in that villa. And she took it and has done something with it. She tried to kill me in the process of my doing what the fist ordered. Very interesting, and uh, we're going to come back to that. However, you I've seen you and heard about you scurrying around Waterdeep these last few days, and I'm so very interested in what exactly you've been up to. What have you been sc 
scurrying around Waterdeep to do, Erstal. I saw you try to kidnap a horse, of all things. Why was that? And <clears throat> I also hear tell that you were outside the Troll Skull Alley when it went up in flames, fleeing the scene. Why were you there? Why is it that whenever something seems to be going down, you're not too far from the scene? Because I am ordered to be there, and because things would have gone so much better if they had gone as planned, I was simply to steal the stone and take it back to Yala, and she was to take it to the fist. That was all. Only she had that thing throw a fireball, and that ruined it all. And when I got back injured and begged for her assistance, <laughs> she threw me in a cell. As for the horse, how would you know about that? You're not. You and your Lord Fist aren't the only ones with eyes here and there. I've got a few tricks up my sleeve, too, Erstal. Now answer the damned question. Which one? I did. I told you why I was at the fireball. Why the horse? What kind of game piece was that supposed to be? It depends on what you believe. The horse it came to our attention was more than a horse. And the horse overheard a very uh, uncomfortable conversation. I thought as much. He shoots a quick glance to the shepherd and said, So you honestly think, dear Mrs. Well, I suppose it be Ms. now, Grailhund still has the stone. You're positive of that? Or has she handed it off to someone new? I honestly have no idea on that. She had that thing in the room with her, and I broke out of my prison by stabbing one of her guards and getting the key, and I rushed upstairs trying to get the stone back from her since obviously she was going to betray our master. I wanted to get the stone and get it to him, but she had other means. She started her guards in on me attacking. I had others at my back, but it just became a terrible mess with some of the Zentarum coming in, and it, it was a mess all the way around. She was, she was supposed to be loyal to the Zentarum. <laughs> she was supposed to be loyal to the Fist. I imagine the showman thinks he, she is loyal to him. The funny thing is about loyalty is traitors shouldn't expect it. After all, you were supposed to be loyal once upon a time, weren't you? <laughs> I would still be to the one who is most powerful, but I am not loyal to her anymore. I have another question, a different branch of questions, if I can just eat up a bit more of your time. I don't know why, but your voice is just aggravating me to no end, but you see, the Grauhuns have reminded me of some very unpleasant history about Waterdeep, and I would be stupid not to suspect their hand, at least partially in all this. So what do the Casalantes have to do with this power play? <sighs> that was Orund. He was in their pocket, you know. He hated his wife hated her with a passion. She had to keep him alive, but she knew, she knew he was with them. They 
I don't know how much is true, but they've got things going on in that manner that would curl your hair, provided you have any. Well, he points up at his, he motions up at uh, Erstel's bowl, um, burnt scalp with his dagger. More than you, presently. <laughs> it doesn't matter. If you do not kill me, someone else will. Do you have any idea how many people hate me right now? I, I find it almost a badge of honor. But could you use a friend? If I thought you were a friend, I would be a bigger fool than I have been already. You were the biggest fool imaginable opposed us and attacked a noble manor full of armed guards, whether you thought you could get away with it or not. However, uh, the dagger just slowly inches closer to his skin. The fact that we haven't killed you and disposed of your body for the buzzards yet is testament of how friendly we can be here, still, especially after what you said this afternoon. So I would think very carefully very carefully on how you answer this question and reconsider. Could you use a friend? Because I'm in a forgiving mood. How about you? You could release me and I could run and I would say that my chances of surviving the 10 day would be maybe 5%. If you wish to say you are a friend, go ahead. It doesn't really make any difference to me. And uh, Epiphany will uh, see what, what the thought. He is completely, he has given up any hope of surviving. He's pretty much just spilling 95% of the beans and uh, he honestly doesn't seem to know a lot of the things that he says he doesn't know. Maybe there are some questions you haven't asked that might be something he would withhold, but at this point he's pretty much figuring he has nothing to lose. And, um, did, and did he seem straightforward when he was talking about the stone? So. Yes. <sighs> Calm corpse, did you have any questions? Indeed, I do. May I take the seat? And I'm looking at really again. Or did you have more to ask? I'm done. He just pats Erstel's uh, cheek with his dagger for now. You play nice, or I'm going to come back. He just shakes his head like, whatever. I'll take a seat right in front of him. Hello, Aristotle. Do you happen to know who I am? Yes, you're the shepherd. You used to care for the city of the dead. I still do. Let's hope that I don't have to care for you. I who will be better Orin off Grauhund? then. Who killed Oren Grauhund? I. I killed Oren Grauhund, and I am glad of it. You were the dagger who was the hand. You say that uh, Yala Grauhund wanted him dead. Did you do it on her order? No. No, I did it because his dealings with, with the castle hunters was part of the problem. If he was out of the way, we could do things without it and I thought perhaps just perhaps if, if I killed him maybe maybe she would stop doing what she was doing so she manipulated you into doing so unfortunate I suppose but following the point where she had me jailed because I did exactly what I was supposed to do I had very little hope. I simply wanted him out of the equation. Speaking of that, 
you know, it seems that this city has a fascination on the rumor that they just don't see what's right in front of their face. Are you sure you were aware of Oren being in the Castle Enter's pocket? He tips his head like he's thinking about it. I should we... probably rephrase this question because I don't think you understand the word pocket like I do. Perhaps I should say cult? There are things going on there. And I know that you did not go into his room behind him. You should have. He has a circle in there with runes around it. And he seems to oddly come and go from the manor with nobody knowing where he went. He has dealings with the castle enters. This we know. We follow him sometimes. He is, or he was, doing things with them. He probably was helping them gain power. He probably saw it as a chance for him to grab at the power like all of us. I don't know. So the castle enters do have a cult. I don't know if I would call it a cult, but I know that they, what they are using to gain power is not just money. You wouldn't call it a cult, but Yala Grauhan, that certainly does. Yes, she did. She, she thought of it as such. She wanted him out because she was afraid that he would betray her with the castle hunters and that he was too deeply insinuated into whatever it is that they are summoning in that house. Betray them to who? The master? No, he, he felt that whatever was going on in that house exceeded the power of the fist. So the master is the fist? Yes. Uh, do the other nobles happen to go after anyone else, noble or otherwise, if they need someone to be getting rid of? Do they go to you? Do they go to the fist? Do they go to whomever? They go to whoever is good with a dagger. Sometimes that's the Zentarum, sometimes it is a random assassin. There are many ways of getting rid of somebody, but sometimes you don't need an assassin. They said that the castle hunters seem to be able to just make people disappear. Do you happen to know if the castle hunters made others disappear? Anyone that may have been investigating this cult in the past? That I cannot answer. I am not part of their circle. I can tell you the rumors. The rumors say... I love to hear them. <laughs> the rumors say many things. The rumors say they sold their son to some demon. The rumors say they ate their son. The rumors say their son died of some kind of horrible wasting disease that would infect the entire of Waterdeep. The rumors say the father, the, the old man, died because they made it so. The rumors say everything. I know that they are doing terrible things, but if the rumors are true, I don't know. Well, there is definitely a hint, to the tr a hint of truth to any rumor. Uh, who specific do you know? who may have died. I cannot even tell you for sure that they died except perhaps for the old man himself. Uh, the old man, they say, died of old age. 
But after that, it was a tangled web. I mean, his brother was the next one, Savio. Savio disappeared. No one knows where he went. Did he die? We don't know. He vanished. And Savio's son took over Lorenzo. the reins of the Lord. Yes, Lorenzo. He took over. He was dead within two ten days. He, he died in his sleep, they said. Too much stress, too much. Nobody ever saw the body. He just died, and they said he was buried. And there was the son, uh, Victoro's son. Victoro is Lorenzo's son, one of them. Or he's the brother, the, excuse the current, me. He, he's Sotoro the brother. Is the current lord, Castellanter. Victoro is his lord, yes. So uh, I would just ask, so does he seem up and up? So he's continuing to seem up and up throughout this whole process because yeah, the timer just went off. Yeah, and he's uh, he he basically, he's just, he is spouting the rumors as he knows them, but he doesn't know any inner workings of the Castellanters. He just knows that dark things are going on there and that Orand was in some way connected to it. Then let me ask this one last question, since you happen to know rumors and I don't know this one. Do you happen to know of an Inara? Not specifically, but it seems to me I remember the name from a long time ago. I don't know how. It seems like she was connected in some way, but I cannot tell you how. Is Epi's thing still on, or do I have to invite? Epi's, Epi's thing just ended, but um, what Epiphany will do is Epiphany sends a mental message to you and just says, up until this point, the entire time that I have been scanning his mind, he has been forthright. We do not, we have not detected any reason for him to lie. He appears to believe that he will die soon, and so there is no reason to keep the secrets. So at, at this point, I will inside check what his last statement was regarding Inara. Okay. And that'll be a 15 for the insight. He looks like he's really trying to remember the name and feels like he has heard it once before, but he doesn't remember. He looks like he is really struggling trying to remember where and when he heard the name. Let me jog your memory, and in my sleeve, I pull out a sheath dagger. And I just set it on my lap. Are you threatening me with it? I do not recognize the dagger, if that is what you are asking me. Do I believe him? With that, if you, yeah, with that insight, I would assume for a few moments you would, you would read his face well. He, he looks at it more, his face is more like, are you going to stab me with it? Uh, you know, I don't care. But he doesn't look like uh, it means anything to him. I give it an awkward moment, a long moment, before I take the dagger, put it back into my sleeve, and stand up. Thank you. Your time has been very enlightening. He shrugs. Any steps forward. Do you know where we can find an associate of these? He looks at like Casa Landers. Go up and knock on their door. They live in the big manor up on the hill. Which I could. It would be well known to anybody. They have one of the biggest mansions in the city. This guy living here for almost a century. Oh, yeah. We will, you, we will ask you that, Calm Corpse, but perhaps at another time. Another thing, Astral, if you don't mind going back to me for a bit. The showman. I'm guessing we can all guess who that is, yes? Most definitely. 
Uh, perhaps then, you can, and perhaps you can't. Then, the clockwork man. Any idea where it's scurried off to? The one that's the one that Grahund had. No idea. Was I? I know where it will wind up eventually, but I don't know where it is now. I doubt very much she would have sent it directly there. Where? In the hands of the showman. I'm going to risk much, but I know because it was my job to watch and listen and learn. I have been trained for that, and she did not know how well I was trained. She only suspected but did not know. The showman, <laughs> he is everybody when he wants to be. The showman is this man. He is that man. He is that noble. He is that person. And she thought, and there in her betrayal, she is the stupidest of us all. She believes that she has him twisted around her fingers, that she could kiss him on the neck and snuggle, and he would fall madly in love with her. And he smiled and gleamed and called her sweet things. And in the end, he, he will own Waterdeep. You mark my words. The show are the showman and the fist working together. Oh, Charlie, you just either one of them would gladly kill the other in a second. They hate each other with a passion you cannot believe. We can use this, thank you. Hmm. Calm corpse, a moment. Yes. And Epiphany will pull uh, Shepard aside. Tell me, I frankly despise your faith and every other faith, but our would someone be able to disappear wearing robes similar to yours? It is possible. I may know some people that could get him out if we're looking to be charitable. He expects to be dead before the end of the 10 day. Perhaps we can make that happen. I mean, we can do that now. You are missing the subtlety. Yes, I am. We make him die, as far as anyone knows. And then we keep him on retainer in the dead city. As payment for allowing him to continue his mortal coil. That... But would I know that if the City of the Dead just takes in anyone that's looking for work? Nobody works in the City of the Dead. Well, I'm talking about like the like the Undertaker's Guild and whatnot. Like no, they would prob. Erstal, uh, now if you could change his appearance or something like this, 
perhaps they I mean they take in unskilled labor yes as grave diggers and such it is entirely possible it is not a feasible plan considering the connections the nobles have they will likely find out about it his best course of action if we are again being in a charitable mood is to essentially smuggle him out of Waterdeep. We do not like him that much. It was a thought. Definitely one worth asking. Um, I mean, the City of the Dead could always use more grave diggers. And our thought was simply, you are associate of the one who is of death. He could simply be officially regarded as dead, and then all of his wealthy associates who despise him will know that he is dead. At this point, Nakri, hmm. you hear an odd screeching and hissing sound at the front door, and it's like some small thing of some kind is scratching, trying to get in the front door. Kevin. I am, since I, I was, uh, since I was doing a little bit behind the, the uh, scenes with, um, with Varus, at least, uh, I don't know if we can move the F back to the bar. I will, just a second. Um, yeah, no worries. She was just guarding the door, like you told her to. Yeah. Well, I know, she, I know Nakri had gone over here to let Ferris out. Because they, okay. they had been talking upstairs, something that we had uh, regarded here. Um, hearing the scratching, Nakri would ready the Warhammer and slowly open the door. There is a small dark green snake, flying snake, that is flapping outside the door wildly. It is attempting to, to like get your attention, and you can see that, bound by a cord to its, uh, its lower extremities, is a uh, um, rolled scroll that says. Relian Epiphany on it. I will not bash the thing in and gently pick up said creature and keep it with me until the two of them come up. Okay, it will it will come in with you when you treat it well. It will follow you in and it will kind of like fly near you like it's waiting uh, and if you try, if either of you try to reach for the scroll, it will immediately fly out of your range. I won't try to take it from him, but it's kind of like a picture, like picking up a cat and just putting it in your arm, just kind of like holding it to pet it. She'll just do that, but won't make it make an attempt to take it anything from it. All right. It just, it's wary, but it, uh, it allows itself to be petted. It's like, oh, this is a nice gig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm getting attention probably, right now. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably like eat it or something. Mine? Mine? <laughs> yeah, a mouse goes, goes running across the floor and it leaps out of your arms and snatches up the mouse and gobbles it, throws it up and gobbles it down. <laughs> One day, one day we're going to meet the actual Kevin, and we're either going to be intrigued or horrified. Oh no! All right. With that, you are waiting for Relian and Epiphany. What are yeah. the group of you in the cellar doing? We should decide what to do with him now. First of all. He looks up. Answer me truthfully. Would you prefer him to stay alive? 
It depends on the circumstances. If you can get away from the nobles and they believe you dead, would you prefer to stay alive? He looks at you with a conniving look. Oh, I would prefer to stay alive and safe, yes. We can fake your death. You will go to the city of the dead as the grave digger for a time until you think it's wise enough for you to try to leave the city and not have to worry about the nobles coming after you. I would agree to this. Perhaps if the luck is with me, which it has not been so far, perhaps just maybe I will live a little longer. Is this acceptable when I'm looking to the others? Tiffany, Rallian? I, um, I guess we are in unanimous. <laughs> Rallian's back straightens. He cracks his neck. In fact, you hear a loud series of cracking coming from all over his body. And he just says, Ah, wow, that was a fun sojourn into the dark side. Ah, uh, yeah, that sounds perfectly reasonable to me. He's made out of bubble wrap. It's not <laughs> crackle pop. Please do not do that sound again for Rallian. It makes us uncomfortable. Oh, but it feels so good. Would this be something that you would have to arrange, Calm Corpse, or do you need our assistance to do that? Uh, if you can find a way to fake his death, I can definitely get him to the City of the Dead. Oh, I can do that! He holds up Mr. Ritual. You were so eager about that. <laughs> I, I I I am confused because he was just he was unhinged and now he's a different kind of unhinged right now. He's unhinged now. He's uh, oh, was look, it? slightly less unhinged, un un but still. First he was unhinged. Now he's unstable. No, yeah, look, it, there you, you go. You you got to decide which flavor of Rillian you like. Do you like demented or do you like manic? <laughs> look here. Here's a here, think of it this way. There's a difference Rillian between the two. The Rullian pendulum has swung the other way now. There you go. That's a good, <laughs> good way to look at it. Um, well, as long we can, as he doesn't we can figure that out. As long as he doesn't actually die, I'm okay with it. I don't care either way. Seems like a futile thing. But go ahead. At this point, there is a loud rapping on the door like somebody is demanding to be let in on the front oh, door. Do we, do we hear this from the cellar? It is so loud, you clearly hear it from the cellar. I can't go back to jail. <laughs> I must go back to prison. Cashin, Cashin's going to go up and, you know, just, you know, try and make... Make things look normal. I assume it's I, a guard, so... Hold, yeah. hold on, hold on. I'm still up here at the front door, guys. Jesus I'm, Christ. I, I kind of want to say what I wanted to, to do with our soul. Uh, it also may, keep... We may not have the time to fill out this plan. I start taking off my rope. I'll take the dagger, cut the ropes that was binding him. Wear this. Grab some cleaning supplies. Pretend that you are cleaning down here with me for right now. You are a mute grave digger, and you are helping me with cleaning down the wine cellar for the day. He nods. I'm good at playing a part when I have to. All right. So we're, we're getting ready to, to do that then. Yeah. I'm going to uh, send the little thing, point to the basement and send the little thing down there. And it flies rapidly down the steps and into the basement where Relian and, and flaps in front of Relian and Epiphany 
apparently has an image in its mind of exactly who it was looking for, and you can clearly see this scroll dangling with the two of your names on it. Oh, my Mistra, you're adorable. I'm going to call you Squishy, and you will be mine, and you will be my Squishy. Oh, we do not need any more pets, Relian. I'll <laughs> motion to Liev to also close the hatch to the basement. I will and then go, scroll, though. Then go for the door and go, Before you ask, no, we are not opening today, just as according to the laws that seem to so happily shut us down after our grand opening. But how may I assist you today? And you open the door to a smiling, beaming Jalester Silvermane, first of all. Just a second, let me do a bit of changing of scenery here. And Nakri will immediately go, oh, I'm sorry, forgive me for that. I'm just, I'm just actually just ready to hear that the worst news. The first thing he does is he says, we have good news and we have bad news, my lady. As, as everything, but do, but do continue. First, let me give you the good news. And he holds out a scroll with an air of triumph at, towards you. I will gently reach to take it, like, okay. Are you opening it? Uh, yeah, I will try to open it. It's a little bit confused on the face, but it's like, wait, what? The minute you take it and start to open it, you realize that it has the seal of the open Lord of Waterdeep on it. Ooh, oh boy. And when you open it, it is a, an official declaration that the, the city guard is to permit you to reopen the troll skull and to repay you reparations for the damage they have caused you by falsely closing the inn. Ooh. Well, this is a bit of a surprise. I was actually expecting something else. But you said there was bad news, so before I start to wave this and celebrate, do share. He, his face goes into a flat, I have to do this, and it really ticks me off. He turns and motions to the two gentlemen who are behind him, who you recognize. One is that overly officious investigator who closed you in the first place. Mm -hmm. And the second one is his mage sidekick, who is equally overly officious, and they are looking at Silvermane with a look that could shoot daggers, because they have been overridden in this matter, and they're not really pleased. Behind them, immediately behind them, Cashin and Nakri would notice the Blackstaff who has her arms crossed and is staring daggers at the two officials like she is following them and keeping an eye on them. And behind the black staff is a small company of guards led as usual by the ever-present and ever-snide Captain Stadgett. We do not enjoy this. Don't be yeah. worry. Yeah, but I still have an invisibility left. What exactly <laughs> is going on? It seems, my dear, Jalester says, uh, that uh, you were reported to have been in the region of what the street is rapidly beginning to call the Gralhoun bloodbath, and they have demanded to interview you. Oh, absolutely. I don't plan at all. I actually was there. I wanted to actually go around and meet the nobles today. Since we ha had no other pressing business, I heard something was going on, and I wanted to try and help. Unfortunately, they didn't want to let me in, so I went to go look for the guards. By the time I came back, the guards were actually already there. I swear, the entire thing. 
but I will happily answer any question you have. Safe Cromley, who's the, the one who shut you down, he glares at you like he knows you were involved in ever so much more. May we come in? Perhaps you would not like your dirty linen aired on the street. Meanwhile, down in the cellar, if Relian and Epiphany will look under your character sheets, players' character sheets area, and you open handouts, and you open additional handouts, you will find a brand new thing that is a note. And the two of you can read that note. We'll give you time to do that while... while now, what is Nakri doing when they practically demand to come in? <laughs> he looks at her like... What was the look? I was tabbed out. I'm going to look back at the cash in and step aside. They probably want to ask us about why I wasn't near the Grotland estate. Uh, cash in will just, uh, will just, uh, will just, you know, just, sh just, uh, point towards the seat. Captain, the the, Captain the Staget. Seat. Yeah, Captain Staget comes marching up the steps and marches in with the other two, even though he specifically probably wasn't invited, but the other two come in and pretty much make themselves comfortable in an official sense, start laying down folders and, and uh, bags and so forth in preparation for a bunch of interview. Captain Staget marches in with them, looks Cash and up and down, and visibly curls his lip and turns up his nose. I would expect that somehow or other, You'd be involved in this. It doesn't surprise me at all. I'm sorry. Is there a problem with my business partner? <laughs> my lady. Fashion's just looking very, very, uh, well, he, he's just trying to put up a strong front. Like nothing, like this isn't bothering him. Nothing new. Uh, Captain Staget looks up at Nakri and says, Oh, my pardon, my lady. Perhaps you should investigate the background of your partners before you do business with them, or you might find yourself stabbed in the back some night. Uh, but to business, nevertheless, uh, I take up the time of the investigators. Please, and he motions to the other two to, to begin investigating, and they begin throwing questions at you about exactly why were you there, what time were you there, what did you hear, all of these things, that very rapid fire thing, they are trying, obviously, it's coming from both of them, both sides, and they are obviously trying to rattle you a bit and have you contradict yourself as you're going. Uh, we'll see how well you do in just a little bit with a roll, because there's just like dozens of questions coming out. Oh and my god, I hate, I hate that notion. My role is going to suck, and it's like, it so goes against what the character is going to do. Could yeah. I assist her? Yes. Yeah, obviously you would be able to assist and maybe throw in a word or two here or there to clarify what she's saying or something so, like this. So I do the help action. Yes. Okay. And one of the key questions that they ask you several times and in like four different ways to try and get you to contradict yourself is whether you have any associations with or know anybody who is associated with the Zentarum. All right, I need to have you do a performance or deception role for me, please. You can do this. I believe in you. Uh, and Cashin is giving uh, you the help. Uh, <laughs> uh, you said deception or performance? Uh, uh, okay, so not too bad. Uh, with the help action. I didn't hurt them, did I? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's. Like, that's I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out which one I want to go with. Um, the higher one. <laughs> yeah. They're both the plus one! Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> uh, agree. Uh, agree. Uh, do, do performance. Nobody yeah. ever does performance. 
There we go. I do performance. Uh, I would be much better uh, at. If I just click something. Persuasion, that was a plus three, but it's performance and deception, so I'm not going to fight that. Would you take a persuasion, Miss Ruth? <laughs> nope. Performance or no. deception? <laughs> That's a lie. Yeah. yeah, I know. Oh, just I, click I, it. I'm... Just click it and get it over with. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Rip the band aid off. Okay, shut up. I'm taking my head to the fight. <laughs> Poor Lay, uh, with the note, um, <clears throat> Epiphany looks at Brilliant and says, Have you memorized the note? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Ruth, you're gonna give you're gonna give Lynn a heart attack. I hope you know that. <laughs> By the way, while while Lynn is getting over that, uh, in the while Lynn is getting over that, in the God damn. <laughs> she's she's having a nervous breakdown in the yes. background. Oh, Don't mind her. That's a very really good roll. My headset off. I didn't say I muted you guys. <laughs> well, and that, I just and, and I help. So that's a plus four. Yes, right. So um, yeah, you you easily beat their detection ability oh. that they are able to to see into what you are saying, and so uh, they nod. Uh, you manage to sneak it through each time they ask you a different way that you know of absolutely no one that's associated with anything to do with the Zentarm. Finally, after, uh, by this time, Vajra has come in. She's standing beside Cash and she's not looking down her nose at him at all. She's just standing beside him like she is watching. Uh, their names are Seth Cromley and Barnabas Blastwind. She is watching them to just make sure they don't do anything out of line. And you can tell she's not real thrilled about what they're doing. Neither is Jalester, who's just kind of standing in the doorway watching what's going on. But finally, after they ask like a jillion questions and they get nothing but what seems to be reasonable answers, they go, well, we had already told you not to leave the city, and I guess your inn is open now. And he glares at Jalester. And, well, as I said once before, remain in the city. We have a, an ever-enlarging uh, problem going on here. It's expanding by the hour. And until I, until I get to the bottom of this, None of you are leaving. I know you're involved. Vajra clears her throat and she just slaps, clamps his mouth shut. If I may, since you are so willing to come in here and question me like I am some sort of common criminal, I will phrase it to you in this regard. I know from what I've heard from my associates and from everything else, who none of them are what you say I was supposed to know. The people outside are from some part of this entire faction that you're looking for. Two or three dead outside, one has scurried off into the winds, and you are coming to me to find out why I apparently know them. So before you start throwing and slinging mud at my name, allow me to at least prove to you that I am willing to help the citizens of Waterdeep. At which point she throws open the hatch, brings up Erstal Floxen, and hands him over to them. <laughs> <laughs> it no. was all very epi taken away. Uh, yeah. No, Cree, I may also have something else to add, if I may. One moment. I would like to assist in this matter any way I possibly can. I have already made a valid promise to this young man right here that I would help him with the situation outside the city. You are currently delaying that business propaganda since he is still under my employ. I am paying him from work here, but we cannot go out there to get the supplies we need. I cannot trust anyone else to do this because he is the one who knows exactly what he needs. So, I'm not trying to push through any more laws that have already most likely been pushed through. I respect the laws of Waterdeep. That is why I wish to assist in helping this go a little quicker. Sometimes an outsider's eye can be more valuable than people who may have turned a blind eye. I also have something to add to that. I, you may have 
downplayed the importance of what we're doing outside the city. Uh, Varys will stand up from the chair he's been sitting at and walk over to this table next to Nakri. Standing at almost military attention, or what well, seems to be an imitation of it, at least, to a discerning eye. It's not simply a jaunt outside the city to collect supplies. It is, in fact, official business of the Emerald Enclave. And he will take out his pendant of Emerald Enclave. I have business from Melanor Fellbranch himself calling me outside the city. And the longer you detain myself and my companions, the longer you put your own citizens in danger. Not only that, it seems to me that you have failed not once but twice to find any sort of evidence connecting these people and the tavern to anything to do with this case. So I ask, where is your validity in banning us from leaving the city? I just know. And Vajra, at this point, she raises her hand just like that, just raises it, and everybody in the room just goes silent. When she does that, they shut up. You will cease right now, and she's looking at the two officials. He is correct. You do not have an ounce of anything tying it to him, except that these citizens have been attempting to assist you in your failure to protect the city of Waterdeep. I am going to personally, personally mind you, <laughs> write a clearance for them to leave the city. If you wish to pat them down and make sure they are not taking evidence, or you wish to have one of your veterans accompany them to assist with whatever details they have, you are welcome to do that. But you will assist these people in their day-to-day -day operations if they are acting on behalf of one of the known and recognized factions of Waterdeep. They will not be restricted to this city, and you will find a way to allow them to complete their needed functions within a reasonable amount of time. Do I make myself clear? And Seth and Barnabas could gladly choke her, but they just, through clenched teeth, they go, Yes, Madam Blackstaff. And they agree. I think that's an excellent idea. We will send one of the guards with them to be sure that they do not do any activities or take any evidence outside the city. I would be glad to have the assistance. As yes. I understand it, it is rather important business that we have to attend to. Personally, I think some people would be glad I'd be outside of the city for some time. And he just smiles at, uh, at the captain. You don't think that you could manage to stretch it into, say, a decade, Cashin? That's oh. Captain Stagett. Wow. Oh, well, I don't know. My grandparents, I haven't seen my grandparents in some time. Maybe this, maybe I can go up to the Silver Marches again. It would be good to have the stench gone. Captain, none to the offense. It's but all do right. Do not insult my co-worker in front of me. I'm do not insulting him. I'm telling him the truth. It's a hard knockery. I see a desert insult. Not in my house. Ferris walks over to Cashin and gives him a little sniff. Says, <laughs> he actually smells quite like raspberries. He's been helping you in the cellar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't call him Cashin the clean for Honestly, with all of us crazy, like, evil bastards, I kind of love Ferris. <laughs> well, well, he's a good boy. And you call it help, I call it taste testing. Who wants a drink? I mean, they're definitely strong, but the flavor hasn't had time to set yet. Captain Stadgett um, um, kind of taps his knuckle on Seth's sleeve and says, I don't think we're going to get any further here. I'll have one of my soldiers remain. 
and the two men gather up all their official papers and proceed to head for the door. Jalester stands aside for them and kind of gives a, my, be my guest as they come through. Jalester, thank you a thousand times over. If there's anything else I can do for you to repay this, please do not hesitate. Captain Stadgett and the two officials are conversing outside of the steps, and finally Captain Stadgett points at one of the guards and leaves them uh, standing beside your, your door at attention, and all the others go off as you kind of look out to make sure that they have left. You even realize that they had gone so far in their threatening techniques that they even had a griffin rider flying overhead as if you might escape and they would need the cavalry. A police helicopter? Yes. <laughs> Cassian's just, Cassian just giving them that big old fake smile. This is Varys, giving them very genuine smile. Varys, could you do me yes. a favor and go downstairs and do we have any finished bottles of wine that we could gift to these two for their assistance? We do have a couple more of the ones I brought over from my parents' house. I could fetch those quickly. And nothing in the basement at all? Well, the stuff in the basement still has to brew for, and ferment for a little bit longer. I do have uh, about six more bottles of the finished product. Mm. But they're at your house. Our, no, they're our... here. I brought them over from my house. Oh, yes, no. Please go get them, and as he's leaving, she's going to shoot him a message. Tell them not to come up. Yeah, uh, so certainly. Yeah, so my question then is: so did so? Okay, so with the with the snake, because did did we get the did did Rel and Epiphany get the snake? Yes. Okay, the, the, so we got yeah, we got the snake. snake so we got the snake, and then Re and then the door happened, and wow. the knocker was like, "Fine, I'll go back upstairs." No, no, she no, sent okay, the so she sent the snake down. It flew down. Got it. The yeah. snake is currently in Rillian's arm. She's yeah, she sent, she, when she heard the other knock, she sent the snake down to you guys. Got it. Did the whole thing upstairs and is now sending Varys with a message to message. Don't t tell them not to come up type thing. So right. it's supposed to be like a tele uh, telepathic. I did roll an insight check to see if I would get the message, and I rolled 24, so I did. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so Varys will go over to the hatch, open it, set it upright, calls it as he's going back down. Uh, Comes down as Epiphany is chewing on some paper. Uh, he is very visibly shocked to see Erstal still standing there and unbound. <laughs> but no, you don't. What you see is the shepherd without his robe and some man wearing the shepherd's robe. I've got a question about that, actually. His name is Kevin. His name is I've, I've his name a, is whatever my name whatever I'm given hello. for his name. I've got a question about that, actually. Is it Sandor. This is the yep. first. This is the first time we've ever heard of the shepherd removing his cloak or hood or anything. But he and he's done it twice in one day. Uh, shock and awe. What does he actually look like underneath the robe? He looks like <laughs> a, a man. <laughs> Don't do that. Well, see, like a, a human man, okay. he's got kind of almost slicked back hair, like it would have been kind of maybe a little bit poofed up or something, like, like you know, hair gel kind of after the whole day or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's so he just rain, windswept. He's, he's, he's windswept. There's the best, that's the best way to say it. Windswept. He's got black hair, but it's grain in the side and just a normal size beard, like. Apple is not mine. So he's just the textbook definition of average. Yes, he is average looking. <laughs> Brilliant is just looking at him and poking him and says, You disappoint me. Barris comes downstairs and with his three intelligence roll. <laughs> where did Earth still go? Who are you and when did Shepard get over there? <laughs> Sorry. I turned out. <laughs> Relian is going to thrust. Uh, Relian is going to thrust the uncloaked shepherd in front of it. It turns out this is Erstal. Erstal was under a curse all the time. Meet Kevin. This is not Kevin. Uh, I'm gonna, hold on. I'm going to keep this going. Hold on. 
Oh, I'm gonna roll no. deception. You believe no. me. <laughs> I don't 100 percent uh, I'll break the dis I'll break the illusion. I am the shepherd. Uh, uh huh. Now roll insight to see if he's done the truth. I'm about. I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> oh great. Okay, let me grab my sheet. That's roll a persuasion. persuasion. We need yeah, one of the persuasion. one of the memes right. of uh, of um. <laughs> Why are you lying to me? Barris is the definition in my eyes right now. Barris is the definition of naive. Yes. <laughs> you, you don't you don't believe the holy man. You you believe the insane sorcerer. What was uh um John Travolta's character on Welcome Back Kata? Um it was um Vinny Barbarino. Vinny Barbarino. And Vinny Barbarino used to say on that show, I'm so confused. And only I'm so confused. Only John Travolta could say it the way that he said it. But he would say that and it was just he would look back and forth and go, I'm so confused. And that's just kind of what Ferris is doing right now. Very much so. Oh my god. You appear to have broken this poor half water drop so you half wood elf's brain. <laughs> anyway, petting, petting the serpent in my arms, he just says, "So, kid, uh, so little boy blue, what's the what's the hap?" Psst. Uh, well, I can't stay too long. I need to. I will go over to the uh, wine shelf and grab two bottles of my uh, raspberry mead. Uh, for now, the tavern is open, and we're allowed to leave. Uh, there is a city guard posted outside. So, where is there still? I. I, 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 I pulled back, back, I, I pull I back the hood. I just thrust forward Kevin. <laughs> His name is Knox. I, I pull back. I, I pull back the hood to reveal the burn face. Allow me to apologize, Erstel. I was trying to save you pain. Apparently, there wasn't any, which I'm very grateful for. I'm actually going to reach out, grasp Varys by the shoulder, and pull him close, <coughs> and says, "Kid." Despite of what I may come across as, I'm not a fiend. I'm not a bad guy. I'm just going to pat him softly you on the cheek. You very much come across as a fiend and a bad guy. However, I'm very glad that there weren't any uh, immoral events that happened down here. Uh, I'll, I will be able to explain more later. For now, Ursula, I would suggest you staying down here. The rest of you can come up as you see fit. I would also suggest leaving the snake down here for now, if you can. His name is Squishy. I would recommend leaving Squishy down here for now, if you can. Uh, they were asking a lot of questions about Zentarum. So I'm glad no one here is affiliated with them except for Ursula. And I go back upstairs. <laughs> Epi, Epi, and Epi and Rel just share a look. It, it, it's uh, hold it. It's, it's, this, this is you know for for my for, for the for our chat. This is the look. <laughs> it's like that. It's like that. That monkey like side eye. <laughs> Yep, there you go. You're very giant fellows. <laughs> <laughs> I will go back up with two uh, bottles of wine, open them, or bottles of my raspberry mead. Uh, I will not open them. I will offer them one in each hand to uh, Lord Silvermain and uh, Lord Vajra. Um, Lord Vajra? Lady Vajra. Lord, lady Vajra? Lord? She goes by either because it's a lord's position, but she is a lady, so... She will. She will call to either one. Which which would you prefer me to call you as? Lady Vajra is fine. If I am acting in a an official duty, you may call me, my lord, because it, it the position of Blackstaff is Lord Blackstaff. I would like you to have each one of you to have one of these, uh, Lord Silvermane and Lady Vajra. 
Uh, they are a personal. Let me remove my token. They are a personal concoction, uh, a new recipe that will soon be coming to. Uh, what's a specific Coming control? soon control to a tavern near you. We have not been called that long for you to forget. I never <laughs> honestly learned what the name was in the first place. Oh wait, well, it's, it was uh, known to. Uh, yeah, it's known to the street. Okay, then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Coming uh, soon to be on the shelves of uh, Troll School sales. So you consider this a pre-taster. Both of them smile, a very genuine smile at you. And Lord Jalester says, uh, to, <laughs> first to to uh, Nakri and to, then to Cashin as well, I must apologize for some of our officials. They take their... Well, they take their little bit of power overly to be overly important, and sometimes they need to find out that they are not quite as important in the cogs of the city as they think they are. Uh, we will take our leave. We have many things waiting for us, but I am so sorry, and I am glad I have been able to oversee the reopening of the troll skull. Live as long as I have, you learn how to deal with it. Vajra kind of smiles at you with a kind of a knowing smile and says, uh, don't worry, perhaps one of these days we'll get them seeing things in a different light. Maybe. Before you go, though, um, there is one small detail I did not quite tell the guards yet, because I'm trying to find a little bit more solid evidence of this matter. Uh, having heard from the young, the young child that night that there was a puppet on the rooftop, we went, uh, we, my associates, went to the temple to learn more about what could possibly be constructed as a puppet. There may be a possible nimble right running about the street. but we weren't 100% sure and trying to find more information. I know that the guards were investigating such possibilities and had interviewed at the, the House of Inspired Hands. I don't know what they found out there. I was not present, but that would not go well with the temple if there was one running. Uh, no. I will let you and your associates know that uh, remain distant from anything to do with the Zentarum for now. They are in very <clears throat> hot water. Their name keeps coming up on everything that is happening. The blast out here, the thing at the Grauhan Manor, everything is bringing up Zentarum. And they have arrested most of the hierarchy of that organization. It is quite likely that they will face some very, very serious charges. Mm. Mm. So, which guard did Stagett leave? Was it one of the ones that he made sure hated me? Uh, the the guy probably knows your reputation. He doesn't hate you as much as Stagett does, but he uh, he he won't be. He'll have kind of a curled lip when he talks to you. Celebi. Right. I will continue to keep looking into this matter of the uh, Nimbrite. I'm hoping we are wrong, and it is not. But like I said, it, we heard someone said it sounded like this so we went ahead and we just as I said curiosity but I can't connect too many things yet if I find anything of course I will tell tell the guards but I figured I'm being forthwith I will ask you one direct question that they did not ask and this is for my information not for theirs did you overhear any of the battle that went on at the manor? There was quite a bloodbath there, I should let you know. Yes. From the street, we could have heard the sound of clanging metal. 
I see. So which is what prompted me to try and get in. I know it is not my place to try and get in, but if I hear battle that is not sparring or something, you know, something friendly, it is in my nature to try and assist if I can. Of course, I would not hold it and against you to do that. Uh, Lady Galhund, I understand, is protesting that she was held hostage for hours by members of the Zentarum, and she is bringing charges that could actually mean their death. So I wanted to know if in, you had seen anything at all that might uh, act in their behalf. Uh, all, I, all I have, all I have heard, and I do not know anyone personally. All I have heard is that there are two different groups. Are you? Are they absolutely sure they are blaming the right one? The news of the two groups, and he looks at Vajra, is well known to us. However, the city and the officials are treating it much as if it is merely a minor power war between two people who wish to control what was already considered to be a definitely dark organization. They do not care that the two halves kill each other off and probably are far more interested in finishing the job for them. But I myself would like to be ensured that those who are truly innocent do not have the headsman as uh, their accomplice. Question. Uh, I just want to pick your brains. That little, that lovely little fist tattoo the Splinter Group has, do you think it's associated with anyone in these Zentarum's past? A uh, Vajra chews on her lip, and she looks very uncomfortable saying anything. And she walks over and very pointedly shuts the door behind you so that the guard outside doesn't hear anything. And she says, that symbol, the only one in the history, long history of what the Black Staves knew or what they encountered, that symbol has been attached to only one. And I shudder to think that he is in some way, some impossible way, through magic of the most vile kind, has managed to return. It was connected to the wizard who called himself Manchun. And would Cashin know this name? Probably. Give me an intelligence roll with advantage. It would be in the history of Waterdeep. Yes, you've heard it. You may not know all the history of it, but you know that he was, he lived some time ago and was probably associated with the whole mage war that was linked to the thing where the lords eventually became the ruling faction in Waterdeep. But there were mages that they had to overcome that had power, and the mage who founded the first open lord of Waterdeep uh, basically had to defeat them in order to get the city out of their hands. And Manchun was wrapped up as having his controlling fist in that pie. Well, Cash will just shut at the thought of that. Mm. Well, great. So we have a pretender or the genuine deal. And there's so many other things at play. I will guarantee that I will not openly be trying to get involved with anything related to that group. However, I fear much akin to my one-time interaction with the uh, uh, what was that other group we went into, we, we ran across? Dragon Death? No, the, uh, the, that other group in the sewers. Ah, oh, the, Zan the Xanathars, much, yes. Much akin to that group. I have a funny feeling 
They'll be crossing my path regardless of whether I want them to or not. If I hear anything, I will, of course, tell the guards. Well, and the more we learn, the more we realize the people who are causing this war have the worst kinds of power. So please, my lady, be very, very careful. Believe me, I came out here for one reason, and I am involved in a whirlwind of many other things. I am going to do whatever I can to protect myself, the people around me, and as many people as in Waterdeep as I can. There you have Waterdeep in a nutshell. This is exactly what our business is like all the time. Oh, one one small thing. Who would I have to talk to? And I'm just going to make my way around to, you know, come closer to the top. Who would I have to talk to to potentially get a, um, a small clock-like memorial put in the rather ugh center of the alley? Just, a, just a something for people who lost anyone to go and lay flowers or something. Um, who would I have to talk to? You mean a clockwork device? I was thinking, since I visited the the, uh, the, te the one temple, uh, putting sort of like a little timepiece in, in that street. I would assume the temple itself would be the place to go. They are certainly ingenious with such matters. Hmm. I, I figured it was something to help, uh, help unite the people of the street to make people feel safe somewhat safe and as well uh, put a memorial for those who have lost lives. An excellent and kind gent gesture, my lady. I will support it wholeheartedly, but I'm sure that the House of Inspired Hands will have to tell you whether or not they wish to make such a device. It is within their capability, I have no doubt. Hmm. Uh, like, like I said, it was a... Uh, so I will go back and talk to them. Uh, but I also was just making sure of uh, city permits. I don't want to just randomly build something in the middle of the streets and have... You know, well, um, I, I would say that you <laughs> should put it over on the side at the corner where horses will not stomp on it as they go past. I understand there is a crew coming tomorrow to fill in the large hole in the street. Perhaps it could be put in the street itself, like a... Like a Broadway type memorial. Star on Broadway, yes. Star on Hollywood Way. Why, that's a fine idea. Again, talk with the House of Inspired Hands and see if they can do something that might be a good remembrance. Oh, you most certainly will. Um, just trying to think if there's anything off the top of my head. Forgive me. It's it's been a day. Um, I'm actually trying to remember if there's anything I was trying to like come across. Uh, let's leave it there and you can yeah, think sure. of it during the week since it's about time for us to call it so I'm going to go to the crew that was in the basement uh, Jalester Silvermane and Lady Vajra will nod take their bottles of raspberry wine and leave to do their official duties with a slight glare at the guard who is standing uh, outside your door, they will walk off talking animatedly about the events of the last few days because there's a lot to talk about that they are sharing. So they will head off for that. So what will the crew in the basement do once they leave? The shepherd is actually up there already. Once they leave, he'll just say, I heard that there was yelling at guards going on. I kind of wanted to watch that. Um, it I'm is gonna... so unfortunate that you missed it. Ooh, those investigators. Can we, can we bring them back in, please? No. No, yeah. I'd rather not. We must, so, we must. I'm already missing Stagget's daggers, glares. Uh, which of you are upstairs? Out. Which of you are up? I, I would be upstairs. I'm going to make sure that the doors are closed for right Is Epiphany now. upstairs? Epiphany makes their way upstairs. It says, 
You must get your associate back to the City of the Dead as soon as possible. They are completed with their task. I will get myself another robe. Uh-huh. You can uh-huh. borrow my cloak for now if you wish it. I would. I, I need my robe. He- I'm gonna. I'm going to usher everyone towards the back so they're further away from the guard. Yep. And Smart. basically clarify anything that they may not have heard clearly, and point out where the guard like have basically have the have like ghost up a map on the uh, of the like floor plan of the cavern and point out where the guard is currently. I if you want your road back, I can lend Erstel my current cloak. Uh, again, yeah. apologies. It's the only reason I use magic on. Oh, he's downstairs. Yeah. There's nothing stopping us from going from him going upstairs to collect a new to collect a. Oh, actually, I'll just go up myself and get it. That's easier for you. That way, you don't have to step outside without one. I would prefer you not to go through my things. It was a suggestion. I'm just trying to help instead of raising more questions as to why you are suddenly missing your robes. I am merely getting my ceremonial robes. I did not want them to get dirty while I was cleaning. Fair enough. In any case, the problem we're facing at the most immediate moment is trying to get uh, you, as I understand it, you're going to be smuggling Erstel to the City of the Dead? No, we're not doing any such thing. My associate knocks back to the City of the Dead. He was never here, Barris. Yes, I understand that. I'm not speaking in metaphor currently. We're trying to we get want to make sure that the associate stay upstairs. Stay upstairs. We also get, want to make get. sure that he doesn't get outside. That's why I'm me. speaking softly. No. Kid, let me let me hear in right now. When you're doing something like this, you always speak in metaphor. I would assume that you would be escorting our associate to the city of the dead currently. He oh. says with a face of strained patience. Perhaps the best thing to do. Oh, I I understand. Perhaps, um, friend Brilliant, you and I could. Uh, assist the shepherd or the calm corpse whatever the heck his name is in my notes yay my brain um, <laughs> sorry and we, we could assist uh, in escorting him to the city of the dead around lunchtime like a, that sounds like a great idea um, sorry what, what do you think calm corpse uh, I'm sorry, responding to Ellie. Oh, uh, yeah, so Epiphany was like, Hey, really, and why don't uh, we take, uh, we, we help the shepherd, um, you know, take his new friend to the city of the day, around lunchtime tomorrow. For the purposes of our viewers, I have posted the note for you to read so you can see some of what is going on behind the scenes so that you can understand that a lot of this may have ulterior motives. We would love to assist you. That is, that is the line, Miss Ruth. We are being completely altruistic right now. Of course. I don't see any reason point, as to why you can't. Point being is that perhaps it would be best for a small group of us to wait by the gates to do our exterior bus- our exterior city business and take the guard with us, saying that we will meet you and that you are not currently here. Hmm. That would work. We could... Keep the we- baby order to watch the building, not necessarily follow us like a lovely puppy. He was ordered to escort us outside the city and, uh, and supervise us on our affairs there, if I remember correctly. Yes, but a lot of our affairs happen here. Just saying. We'll figure that out. And I will, I will remind you, OOC Lee, and then I'm going to end it. I will remind you that um, your, you were advised to bring assistance because 
uh, at least Varus was advised to bring assistance because they didn't know how se severe the corruption problem was. Uh, mm. And uh, secondly, that these corrupted scarecrow things that he is after seem to occur only at night, the very dead of night, does not occur during daylight hours. Okay, so... We would still have to go travel out there and then see it at night, so we... But it's a ways to there anyway, so... So it'll probably be better horrible. to leave during, first thing in the morning. But well, no, maybe. they only come out at night. So, so what yep. we do is we we leave, do the do the do the lunchtime drop off of Knox, and then go or go the over. This it is like late dinner time tonight. You could do that tonight and do the note okay. tomorrow. Yeah. Or we could no or, Yeah, that's what I say. Is yeah, a, little, a lot of people are still hurt. I am spelled out. I am also spelled out, and at less than half hit points. It is six p.m. I'm pretty fine. 6 p.m. plus an eight-hour sleep. What's a minimum sleep for considered for rest? Six hours? Minimum sleep is six hours with two hours of watch for an eight-hour long rest. Um, so I would say that, that you could pretty easily by 1 a.m. have gotten a rest and head out of the city. Ooh, I'm okay with that. And then we just leave Ursel here while we're Okay, that's sleeping. the other that's the other question. That's the thing. Yeah. How Ursel, much how, how much do you trust him? Not a single well, bit, which is I why just, I don't know. his self interest. Yeah, here's the thing. His self interest is to keep living. If he runs the op the out that we're offering him, it's gone. That's right, Trust but you have interest. beautifully disguised him, and one of the things he is a master at, as he has said, is disguise. And if he leaves, it's no skin off our... It would still look bad if he gets caught somehow, so yeah. I'd rather get him to the location um, and be done with it that way. So I would rather just... We just do the drop-off and then do... The um, thing tomorrow because we still yeah. have to like get out there and set up, and we're all mm -hmm. packed. So yeah, and we also need to collect the herbs for Catherine's quest for the herbalist. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So 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 we'll do the lunchtime thing, then we'll do the herbs, then we'll do the scarecrows. Right, the we'll herbs will be very brief. Uh, it will be basically a roll to see how well you complete it. So it's not really a full quest. It's just more of an errand. Um, but the mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Varus is, is a full quest. Uh, Varus will, with permission, go, like he'll talk to other people about it first, but he will go to the guard posted out front and say, we're not planning on leaving until uh, midday tomorrow. You may want to make yourself comfortable. The guard will say, my, my instructions were to accompany you when you left the city. I do not wish to stand here for an entire day waiting for this to occur. Would you, on your honor, be willing to come and ask for me? I don't have a name for him. A name. Devin. Oh. <laughs> um, and, and have me accompany you when you leave the city. Uh. Of course, you have that on my honor, not only as a citizen of Waterdeep, but also as a member of the Emerald Enclave. The Emerald Enclave is an honorable organization, sir. I would look forward to a rest overnight. I will see you when you are prepared to leave the city. Other than that, like do not leave, because it would look badly on me as well as on you. <laughs> we have no plans of that. Uh, would you like me to send you off with any sort of uh, mead or ale or anything like that? If you have a bottle of ale, I would most appreciate it, yes. I will go get a bottle of low-quality alcohol that we can afford to spare. He will take it. He will kind Please of... Bribery. Tap, <laughs> tap his helmet with the, with the bottle and say, thank you very much. I will see you tomorrow. Where I go, uh, where again can I find you tomorrow? 
I will be at the guards barracks. Guards barracks. I'll make sure to come and get you. Thank you very much. You are a reasonable man, sir. And he will tromp off towards the barracks. Nathir will let Ryan know. It's like, I have my suspicions. I'm not going to ask directly, but do keep your friend hidden. Very well hidden. I never saw it. Oh, no, it's uh, time. Oh, what? No, it's, it's time for... Um, maybe in the near future it might be. Uh, if anyone's were outside of the city, it might be oh. time for everyone. It might be time for a secret time. I don't know. But, we'll have a nice um, conversation outside the Outside the city. And but, uh, with yeah. that, as you guys well, close the doors and lock them and uh, make sure that everybody stays in the house overnight uh, or go upstairs to your beds or whatever, uh, we will say good night for tonight and we will set up next week. Will you be starting with City of the Dead or will you be starting with the quest? City, 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 city of the Dead. dead. All right. We and will be set up. I'm going to a window and releasing the serpent because I don't trust this thing around my chicks. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yes, it would probably eat them. You are absolutely right. So with that, we will say good night from uh, Crohn's Crucible. Uh, Shepard, what was the final score or the near final score? 31-20 chase. Nice. Hey. <laughs> Yay. Okay, very good. Um, we will see you next week. Good night from Crohn's Crucible and from yeah. Rallion. Bye, everybody. Look, it's not nothing personal, I, but I don't trust the law system because when you think about it, when you go into court, you are putting your fate in the hands of 12 people who weren't smart enough to get out of jury duty. <laughs> wow. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, good night.